Hello everyone, in this session we are going to discuss and start with collections in Apex. So we are going to discuss how many types of collections are there in Apex. Uh, then to do a deep dive of the list class in Apex, that is the list collection in Apex. And then uh, we are going to see some time complexity. And in the end we are going to solve some lead code problems. So let's start. So firstly, uh, the intro. So we have three types of collections in Apex that are lists, sets and map. So your question would be, what are collections? So collections are collections in any programming language is a way data is stored in that. So uh, data collections are basically containers that are used to store data in a particular format. So now let's uh, see how many types of containers are or how many types of collections are there in Apex. So firstly, we have the list uh, collection. A list is an ordered collection of elements that are distinguished by their indices. List elements can be of any data type, primitive type, collections, S object, user defined types or built in Apex types. So a uh, list is an ordered collection of elements. We know that uh, list, uh, we can access the list element using an index. We just need uh, to provide the index in the square bracket and we would be able to access the list index. That is why it is an ordered collection of elements. Um, so now what are sets? Set is an unordered collection of elements that do not contain any duplicates. Set elements can be of any type, uh, uh, same as that of list. So um, uh, a set basically is an unordered collection of elements and it can't contain duplicates. List can contain duplicates. So sets are mostly used, let's say that if you uh, in Salesforce, let's say that if you want to store the IDs, uh, you create an ID set and you put all the you add all the IDs in that and you know that uh, the IDs should not be duplicated. So that is why you create a set uh, in the back in the background. A set is an unordered collection. That means you cannot access uh, the set element using uh, the indices. So you'll have to loop through all the set elements. So you can't just access a single element using an index. So uh, now what are maps? A map is a collection of key value pairs where each unique key maps to a single value. So uh, uh, key values can be of any data type, primitive data types, uh, collections, S objects, user defined and built in Apex types. So key can't be repeated uh, multiple times. The keys of the map are always unique. They can't be duplicated, but the values, we can have a uh, duplicate values for uh, different keys. So maps are useful when you want to store, uh, let's say, an key and you want to store data that is related to that key. For example, the key could be the ID of the account and the date uh, and the value could be all the account attributes for uh, uh, that are uh, related to that ID. So now let's discuss what are ordered and unordered collections. So ordered collections are the one in which the position of each element is fixed. That means that they are stored in the memory contiguously. For example, this is the example where we uh, initialize a list with two values and we know that the zeroth uh, element, uh, if you want to access the zeroth element, we can do ls uh, square bracket zero and first el element can be accessed from ls uh, square bracket one. So obviously, so they are storing it uh, one after the another. The memory uh, in which it is stored is contiguous. For, uh, but for unordered collections, um, the position of each element is not fixed. That means they are not stored contiguously. So and that is and the order of the elements are not maintained. For example, in a map of set, we cannot directly access the element using the index because there is no specific order. Now let's go deep in the list class in Salesforce. So a list is an ordered collection of elements that are distinguished by their indices as I said earlier. Lists can contain any collection and can be nested within one another and become multidimensional. Uh, we can, a list can contain up to seven levels of nested collections. So it could be like a list of a list of a list and so on. So uh, there is a limit of seven levels of uh, nested collections and overall eight levels. So we can declare, we, are, we have multiple ways to declare a list. So we can use the new keyword as well as we can use the standard array notation. Uh, for example, uh, we can say something like list of string colors is equals to new string uh, bracket uh, one. So that we, uh, this way we are creating an array in the background with the size as one. 
So even though the size of the previous string array is defined as one element, lists are elastic and grow as we needed. So even if we have input here and we have created a list of uh, one element, uh, if we use the list dot add element, uh, list dot add method to add new elements, uh, the list would be elastic and grow uh, as much as it needed. But if we use the square bracket notation to add uh, to the element, then a list behaves like an array and isn't elastic. That is, we won't be able to allow to add more elements than uh, what is declared in the array size. So all lists in Apex are initialized to null or uh, any collection, any variables, all are uh, anything that we define is initialized to null in Salesforce. So list can have duplicate elements as I told before and this is uh, a difference we have uh, of list from set. Set can't contain duplicate values. So now uh, let's discuss the different list methods in Apex and what are their time complexities. So uh, you need to have a basic understanding of time complexities here. You need to know what is big O notation. I'll just uh, explain that in brief. So big O denotes the worst time, uh, worst case complexity, worst case time complexity. So we have two different types of complexity. One is time complexity and one is space complexity. So uh, big O uh, denotes uh, the worst case complexity uh, of a scenario. So uh, let's say that uh, uh, let's now let's see the different methods of list and uh, what are their time complexity. So list add method. So the list add method is a constant time operation since we are adding the element at the end of the list. And we, uh, for a constant time, we denote the complexity as big O of one, character uh, number one. So that means it is a constant time. So uh, uh, the clone method, uh, we have a list clone method. This is a big O of n time complexity, where n is the number of elements in a list. Let's say we have a list of four characters and we want to clone it. We want to create a new list, which is a clone of the first list. So we'll have, uh, uh, we'll create a for loop and that would run four times the iteration of that because since the list total elements are four, so it needs to run four times. So in the worst case, it is a big of n time complexity operation because uh, the number of operations that we need to perform was, the, was still the length of the uh, first list. Similarly, the list contains method. So this method checks if the list contains a specific value or not. So uh, this is also a big O of n time complexity method. Since in the worst case, we would have to iterate over all the elements. So this is also called as linear search. So we perform linear search in a array or a list. We will iterate over the list elements uh, till the size of the list and we'll check whether this element exists uh, in the list. So this is a, a big of n time complexity in a list. Uh, the get method, the, uh, we, we provide the index uh, within the get method to get, uh, to get the value of the specific index. So this is a constant time operation since the list is ordered as we discussed. And uh, we have a list remove method. This is interesting. So if we provide the index of the last element, then it's a constant time. Otherwise it is a big O of n operation let's say we have a list of four elements and we want to remove the fourth element. In that case, it is a constant time because we just need to re remove the last element of the list. But let's say we want to remove the first element of the list. Um, uh, in that case, we'll remove the first element, then we'll have to uh, move. It becomes a big O of n operation. So uh, because moving the elements uh, to one step backwards, requires uh, some complexity. Now a uh, list dot sort method, this is usually based on the programming language, but usually it is a big O of n log n operation. So this is the best case, uh, best time complexity uh, we can have uh, for sorting algorithms. Uh, this is for, for merge sort and quick sort. Uh, for these two sorts, we have the complexity as big O of n log n. So that is why this operation is a n log n operation. Uh, now list dot size, uh, which finds us the length of the list. So this is also a constant time because list is ordered and we can find the last element and we can find the first element and then we can subtract uh, uh, these two to find the size of the list. 
so these are the these were some list methods common list methods with their time complexities so now let's solve some questions from lead code so now the first question which we are going to solve is a basic question uh, is a easy question so it's uh, the question states that write a function that reverse a string the input string is given as an array of characters s you must do this by modifying the input array in place uh, with big o a big uh, o of 1 extra memory as i said big o of 1 means that constants that uh, constant memory that means we cannot create a new array to reverse it we have to do it in place that means we have to modify the same array only so now let me let me go to the uh, so now let me go to my go to my salesforce org so and uh, let's solve it so i've already created a solution in the execute anonymous window so let's discuss this so this i've initialized a list of string where i've provided five characters uh, with uh, which makes the word hello uh, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the two pointer technique i'm going to initialize the first pointer as 0 and the second pointer as list of size minus 1 uh, because list element starts from 0 so uh, now uh, i'm going to do a while loop uh, where ptr1 one, pointer 1 is less than pointer 2 now what i'm going to do is i'm going to store uh, uh, the value of the uh, pointer 1 and i'm going to uh, override the uh, this h value with the pointer 2 uh, with the value of the list of pointer 2 that would be o since we need to reverse it list would list, now the list would be o e double l o and similarly uh, when i override the pointer 2 with temp temp value to the pointer 2 that is we will override the last element with the value that we stored in the temp variable so the array after first iteration would be something like this now we are going to uh, increment pointer 1 and decrement pointer 2 so now our pointer 1 is here and our pointer 2 is here then we are going to uh, do the same operation uh, that is uh, this uh, substitution operation and our, um, and once this condition is false then we are going to break out of the loop and then we are going to print our array so let's run it and uh, i'm going to select it i'm going to click execute highlighted so i'm going to click debug only and we can see that the array got reversed successfully from hello uh, it the array got uh, reversed to o l l e h that is the reverse of hello so uh, so we have successfully solved the first problem that is the reverse string and the time complexity of this problem is big o of n since we are going to iterate over the full array so what if we iterate over the full array uh, that means uh, n stands here for the number of elements so our complexity becomes big o of n now let's solve another problem that is the valid anagram problem so this is an interest, interesting problem. So it states that uh, given two strings s and t return true if t is an anagram of s and fo and false otherwise. So firstly, let's understand what is an anagram. An anagram is a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of a different word or phrase, typically using using all the original letters exactly once. So our first string is anagram and our second string is nagaram. So, uh, uh, the output here would be true because the number of characters uh, in S is same as the number of characters in T. Guys, R is repeating once, N is repeating once, G is repeating once, and M is repeating once. Similarly, if we see here, A is repeating thrice, N, G, R, M are repeating once. That means the number of characters in both these strings are the same. So, output should be true. Now, if we take a false example, rat and care, here, R is present in both the strings, A is present in both the strings, but uh, in the first string we have T, T is not present in the second string, uh, we have C here. So this means this is not an anagram, so the output would be false. So now let's discuss how would we solve it. So I've already created one solution, so this is the uh, using array or list solution. So we can have multiple solutions for it. So the time complexity of this solution is uh, big O of n log n. Since we are using the sorting, uh, we are going to take help of sorting and uh, the sorting requires n log n time 
for, for any sorting algorithm. So uh, uh, these two are strings. So I'll go to my uh, documentation and I'm going to search for the split method. So a, uh, we can use the split method to convert a string to an array of string, right? So now uh, what uh, we need, we just need to provide an expression within the split method uh, so that we can uh, split that string to an array. So now uh, I have provided here a blank string, a blank value because uh, I want to uh, split this full string. So uh, when after this uh, line number 24 executes, the it will convert into a string of A, N, A, G, R, A, M. So every value will, will be split into a single array element or a list element. Similarly, here it would split into the same element. Copy this line and I'm going to paste it after line number 25 to see how it looks. So now I'm going to ex execute, I'm um, highlight this and execute highlighted and I'm going, going to click debug. So you can see that uh, our strings got converted into arrays or lists of these type. But if we try to compare these values, it would return as false. So firstly, we need to sort these two arrays. So we uh, after this line, we have sorted it. Then we have provided a check of anagram, so which returns true. And these are the sorted values. So the number of characters in all uh, in the both in both the strings were same. That is why it passed the anagram check. So yeah, so uh, so we have successfully solved the valid anagram question as well. So I'll give two questions to you as homework. So one is the valid pal palindrome and one is the palindromic number. So you need to solve it in Apex uh, in Salesforce using the standard array or string methods. I'm also going to provide the documentation links. So and these two questions link so you can get that in ease. So. Uh, that's all for today's session and uh, in the next videos I'm going to create a similar uh, video on sets uh, collection, set data structure and then the map data structure or the map collection. So do subscribe to the channel and uh, wait for those videos. So thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.